You know, Amber, when you consider that real estate investment in this country is inching up towards 10% of GDP overall, that is a, that's a pretty frightening headline, but it does speak, as you mentioned, just to the level of misery that people who want to get into the market and can't get into the market are experiencing. Look, folks, I've been trying to figure out how I can affordably move out of my parents' basement, and I think I figured it out. Check this out here, folks. I found a parking spot in Toronto. Somebody's willing to sell for $33,999. Now, this isn't a premium parking spot. Those of you go for around six figures, but we're working on a budget here. So I figure for about $34,000, it's not really a bad price for the location that it sits in. I also realized that what's wrong with van life? I mean, for the square footage you're paying for in a condo, I mean, you're pretty much getting the same stuff out of a van, right? And I found this used van for $132,000. I'm hoping that's Canadian and not US, but it is beautifully well built. It comes with all the amenities. You kind of get a nice small shower some solar panel sunroofs going on other that's going to be useful in my underground parking spot but I'm sure I can find a plug somewhere or utilize some batteries right so combining all that together including you know the sale cost the closing cost the taxes and blah 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 I'd still be under two hundred thousand dollars it's not all that bad right but obviously I'm joking here folks I live in one of the most expensive places in the entire world and it is not slowing down by any means check this out these two neighboring tiny houses in Toronto are on sale now for three Point six million dollars each. Even if you convert that to, t to USDs, it's still over three million dollars. And God knows there is not a lot of square footage backing these properties. I want to explain to you today, we're going to go over some really interesting data that leads me to think that we are going to head off into some kind of a cooling down period in the real estate market. I've already told you why I don't think the real estate market here is going to crash, but that does not stop us from heading into a very sketchy place right now with some statistics. But first of all, let's talk about what it actually costs for the average person to buy a house right now, folks. If we go on to realtor.ca, we can see all these condos, homes, and yeah, you can find condos for 400,000, ranging up all the way over a million dollars. Average house right now, according to realtor.ca and the Canadian government, it's about $969,000 if we took the average median for the average selling house in Ontario. So if we take those numbers, let's run a little bit of math. What is the minimum down payment required on a property like this? Well, according to canada.ca, guys, you're gonna need 5% on the first 500,000 and then 10% on anything above that $500,000. You do a little bit of math, you're going to be looking at 10% of 469,000 because that's everything over the, you know, that half million mark. And then 5% on the half million means we're going to be leveraging a down payment of $71,900 here, folks. Minus that out, we're going to have a mortgage of about $897,000. I really didn't need to do that math myself because there's obviously websites like RateHub that do all this math for you, but we can see the math is accurate because here we can see on a, the average $969,000 home, there's our $71,900. Uh, down payment and that's 7.4 percent and taking a look at the average interest rates ranging from about 1.6 of the lowest to about 2.09 of the highest and keep in mind these are like triple a rated uh, interest rates but nonetheless guys that means your average mortgage payment is going to be between thirty eight hundred dollars and roughly four thousand dollars a month and god knows we haven't started talking about anything else whether it's repairs fixing that up you know getting renters insurance or whatever else in between but keep in mind if you're buying a property in toronto and you wanted to rent it to positively cash flow you need to hit these minimums first and these aren't even the bare minimums when you bring everything else into play so let's take a look what is the average rent going on in toronto for right now and we can see you can rent a three bedroom one bath including pets house for two thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars in fact you don't really have to look too far all the way downtown to find places to rent for anywhere around a couple thousand dollars which is kind of a little bit off-putting if i'm being honest because if you wanted to buy a property and cash flow it it really doesn't turn me on that the neighbor down the road is renting their three bedroom apartment for you know two thousand dollars a month and if we take a look guys where the statistics start really getting terrifying to me is take a look since this pandemic has taken place we have seen rent started falling off literally since the pandemic has took place and they're only just starting to inch their way up and i don't know where this data comes from because i'm stealing this from zumper but everywhere i look right now they're claiming that the average median rent for Toronto has dropped by 19%. That is pretty staggering. I mean, that's that's crazy staggering, right? I mean, take a look. Here's the two-bedroom, three-bedroom. Uh, initially, you could get a three-bedroom rental for about $3,900 back in February of 2019. Today, the average rent is around $2,850. And we can see that when we just take a look at the, these rental places we were just looking at here, guys. Like, here's a two-bedroom, one-bath, 950 square feet for $1,850 a month. That two-bedroom, not even a year ago, guys, was renting out for $3,000 a month. So when you start playing this 
into the actual mortgage and interest rate prices of people that might want to positively cash flow their real estate, it doesn't exist. Um, and this is where the data gets really scary because real estate prices cannot continually rise against people that are speculating. Well, because again, look at investments, guys. If you are buying a property and you're able, able to positively cash flow 5% in your pocket on a million dollar property, that, that would mean that you're cash flowing almost an extra $50,000 a year in your pocket. But if you are no longer making enough money on the rent to cover the mortgage, that means you're negatively cash flowing month over month. And you're presuming and you're betting on the fact that real estate prices are going to keep going up. And that is a speculation, not a reality in the market, folks. Uh, the housing market, we've had a lot of commentary around concern about speculative markets and overheating from the bank's point of view uh, are you comfortable with the balance in the market uh, or do you feel as though additional actions might need to be taken no i, I do think we have uh, a supply demand imbalance that's causing uh, a, a very strong heated marketplace and, and i do believe to your question that we do need to start invoking some policy change in the short term. But a lot of this is coming from strong demand, not only short supply. You look at the correlations to demand, uh, immigration increasing, the store of value. We've had a lot of savings over the past year. There's $200 billion sitting in Canadians' accounts versus normally they'd have $40 billion sitting in their accounts. Canadians are feeling co co you know, confident because of the strength of their wealth and, their, and investments with record stock markets and then to the point you just made there's a change in preference there's a change in consumer needs that are at odds a little bit with urban planning we're trying to densify and go up into smaller units vertically whereas what consumers want to your point is more space planning for a hybrid world in the future inside cities and in more urban rural areas so I think you know, given the strong demand and that I think it'll be persistent, I don't think it's going away because of a lockdown. I think those demand drivers that I just referenced, low interest rates, cash on people's balance sheets, needing new space, wealth effect, all that will persist, I think, over at least a year. And therefore, with the inability of supply to adjust to changing needs and an absolute supply for you know, single family home detached, then... We do need some short-term measures to, to cool things a little bit and allow us to manage the supply-demand imbalance over the coming 18 months. Because I will not buy a single asset really that doesn't cash flow positively because you're really gambling. Imagine, could you imagine buying a house that not only doesn't positively cash flow, but we head into a, a somewhat of a 15 or 20% correction in the real estate prices? That would be brutal for a large amount of Canadians, I think, in my humble opinion here, folks, because like, let's let's presume we want to leave Canada. I mean, you can go down to Vegas right now and look at what a half million dollar home gets you. It, and this is US dollars. So convert that to CAD. Yeah, you're probably spending about six, 650,000 Canadian dollars. But my God, is your money going a lot longer? Longer here. I mean, these are 1,700 square foot homes, guys. 2,000 square foot home for half a million dollars. Like these are friggin' palaces compared to these tiny three million dollar homes we're buying in Toronto, right? So when you combine the fact that you know rent prices have dropped down like 19%, the fact that real estate prices have jumped 20 or 30 percent we are heading into a place of extreme volatility in my opinion in asset prices now i've explained why i don't think canadian real estate is going to crash i think it's highly manipulated i think that's why we continue to see prices rise because we're in a supply and demand problem but there was a lot of construction a lot of new builds and it really wouldn't surprise me and i've made this prediction in the past if we don't see a cooling off in real estate prices that doesn't mean we're going to crash it wouldn't surprise me if we see maybe a 15 20 percent correction at the bottom but for the time being guys i just don't know how anyone's buying real estate here and feeling comfortable about it. I'm sure as hell not going to be buying an underground parking spot. I will gladly rent for anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a month and sleep easy at night knowing I'm not making a $3,000 a month mortgage payment. I'm just putting that out there, guys, and I passed the question off to you. What do you think about all this in that comment section below? Because we are heading into one hell of a crazy world. So stay cool, stay awesome, and I look forward to catching you tomorrow.